So we've decided it's time to move into a caravan on site so that we can clear out the entirety of the station and get it ready for the renovation work. So today we're traveling to England to take a look at some caravans and choose one we can live in for the next few months. So we've decided it's time to move into a caravan so we can start some non-stop work on the station and also get some building work started. We're travelling from Wales to Exeter to visit a company that sells second-hand caravans to people who are renovating. Exeter is about a two-hour drive from where we are. The first thing Gil said when I told him that's where the caravan place was based was, why do we have to go so far? Now for our American friends, I know that two hours away is only down the road, but for us, in the UK, it's really far. So we set out from wet Wales to go over the border to England. Whenever we travel from Wales to England, because we live in the south of Wales, we get to go over this cool bridge called the Prince of Wales Bridge. It's 450 metres long and crosses the rivers Severn and Wye. It's not a very nice day today weather-wise to admire the views, but the bridge is still spectacular. So after a two hour drive, we arrived at Caravantastic to look for a static caravan. Our question as we arrived was, would Caravantastic be as fantastic as it sounds? They certainly seemed to have a lot of caravans to choose from. So we've arrived in Exeter, we're in Caravantastic and there's loads of caravans here we're going to go and have a look at and see what we can find to live in for the next few months. Before we start looking I should mention that we do have some requirements of a static caravan. From doing my research before we arrived, I know that they come in two and three bedrooms. We really need a three bedroom caravan if possible because we have two teenagers. Them sharing a room is feasible but may not be enjoyable in a confined space. So if a three bedroom caravan is possible, then we should probably go for a three bed. The second requirement is heating. We live in Wales, it's really cold a lot of the time. We're going to need some kind of heating for the colder months. The third requirement is budget. We have a maximum budget of £10,000. We can't go over. Let's take a look at the first caravan. Electric heating. So, yeah, so. Oh, do you see gas combi, maybe? Gas combi broiler, yes, yeah, that yeah. is what so GC stands for. So this is yes for a gas combi. So. Okay. Caravan number one is 36 by 12 feet and it does have three bedrooms. It has a nice living area and a good sized kitchen area. Bedroom number one, there's really good storage in there. The master bedroom. Compact but well appointed. Separate toilet. I was expecting this to be the third bedroom, but no, it's the bathroom. Third bedroom, also with good storage. This caravan's priced at £8,490, so it's within budget. That's a really good start, let's check out the next one. This caravan has got three bedrooms, it's 36 by 12 foot. It hasn't got gas central heating, it's got a system called blow air heating. 
This one's over our budget at £10,990. This is very nice. This is new. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, nice. This is nothing. This is above the budget that we set, though. Not, not by loads. <laughs> this is better than the first flat you had. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone we've been in is better than the first flat I had. So this caravan is set up more like you'd have a kitchen diner in a family home. The living room is slightly separate, but in the same room. It's actually 19 years old, but it's been really well maintained and it's really clean. It has a bathroom with shower. Most of these caravans have this type of bathroom set up. Bedroom number one with good storage. The master bedroom. And bedroom three. So that's caravan number two. Let's keep looking. This one's nice but slightly over budget at 10,990. So let's have a look at the next one. Gas cobby, yes, the double blaze gas central heating. So yeah, three bedroom. Um, and this has been recently reduced from 11,790 to 999. This caravan has a nice seating and dining area. And a good sized kitchen with lots of cupboards. As you move through the kitchen, the first door on the right is a bathroom. Bedroom number one. Ooh. The master bedroom. It's a good amount of space in there. Bedroom three. Caravan number three, a good contender and Gil's favourite so far. So on to caravan number four. Oh yes, they're right at the top. Um, it's not a gas combi, double blaze, gas central heating, and recently reduced from 9600. So... Ah, okay, it's a bit of a bargain price. This caravan's reduced to £7,900. This sounds more like a normal living room, isn't it, with furniture? Yeah. A little different, less built in. Yeah. I'm very slopey, I feel like I'm falling backwards. They did warn us before we started looking round that the caravans are not set properly, so it can feel like you're on a boat sometimes with them leaning from side to side. This won't happen when they're in the location where they're going to be used and they're set up properly. Bedroom number one. Toilet. That means the shower must be elsewhere. Is it in this door? I've missed it. Yes. 
shower is in here. There's a separate shower and toilet here. Like in the other caravans, this is the master bedroom. And bedroom three. There's a lot less storage in this caravan. It's almost the same size as the other ones, 12 foot by 35 foot, so only a foot shorter. And it is a bargain price at 7,900. Uh, so, so we've seen four caravans so far and we like most of them. There's lots to choose from and Gil loves pretty much everyone he steps in. So we're gonna have to do a lot of revisiting and uh, looking around uh, so we can make a decision. But it's, it's so good because there's so many to choose from here. So this one is a little bit more expensive. It's actually outside of the budget that we've got, but we thought we'd just have a look to see what you get for that little bit extra money. This is a lot more modern than the other ones we've seen. The bathroom layout is really similar though. Some of the more modern ones have bedding with them. That's really handy because the beds are super small. The master is similar to the other ones that we've seen, as is bedroom three. So the biggest difference with this is that it's more modern. So time to pick which one we prefer. So we've narrowed it down to two. We've just got to make a decision from these two. We looked at more than the five caravans we've shown here. We spent ages revisiting them, re-looking at them. We just couldn't decide. Some of the caravans had better storage, which we're definitely going to need. Some were more modern and well maintained than others. We really wanted to stay within our budget and we wanted something that was a little bit quirky and that we liked. We purposely hadn't brought the girls with us because we knew if we did, they would go for the most expensive caravan possible. They've also both got very different tastes, so it's quite unlikely they would have agreed with each other on the same caravan. Far easier for us to make a decision if only we could make a decision. It took a while, but we got there in the end. So which one did we end up opting for? After two hours of looking around caravans, we finally picked one. We went with this Atlas Dynasty, which looks beautiful. And it's gonna be our temporary home for the next few months. So the caravan we ended up going for is this one. It's older than a lot of the other ones we looked at, but it's really well maintained and it's really clean. The layout is more homely than some of the other caravans we looked at. It is old fashioned, but we quite like that. A bonus is that it's got a door that separates the kitchen and living area from the rest of the caravan. This will be great for us because it means we can keep the dogs in or out of the living area. We're really excited to get this delivered to Wales and set up. So what do you think? Did we pick the right one? Would you have picked this one? So our caravan shopping trip was a success. We bought an Atlas Dynasty that was made in 2005. It's 37 foot long and 12 foot wide. It's used, but it's in really good condition. It was a little above our budget, but the lovely people at Caravantastic are going to deliver it for free. So that's gonna save us. So let's get back to Wales and get started on getting ready for this caravan being delivered. There's a lot to do and we don't have very much time if we want everything to run smoothly. The caravan is being delivered in just over two weeks. Currently, because we haven't actually finished clearing the driveway, the caravan's not gonna fit down the drive. So there's a lot to do to make sure that we're ready for the delivery. So we're back at the station and there's so much we need to do here before the caravan arrives. To start off with, we need to clear the rest of the driveway that's behind me. When we were clearing the driveway, we only did about 50% of it. So half of the driveway is still not as wide as it needs to be for the caravan to fit down here. 
You may remember from previous videos that we discovered that the driveway is actually bigger than we thought it was, and under all that foliage is a curbstone. It was a lot more work than we thought it was going to be to clear the foliage back to the curb and widen the driveway, so we didn't get all of it finished. From the curbstone to the wall on the right is 14 foot. A caravan is 12 foot wide, so we really need that 14 foot of space to be able to get it down here. We're going to have to clear the rest in the next two and a half weeks. We also need to get this skip moved. It should have been picked up a week ago. As the driveway reaches the house, you can see there's still some holes in the path. This is where we dug the tree stumps up and we haven't had time to replace the slabs yet. We need to fill that in and get those replaced. You can also see the wall the tree grew through is still there. Caravantastic told us that the caravan will go over this wall, so we don't necessarily have to remove it. What we do have to clear is the part of the wall that's fallen down behind it and the huge tree stumps that are still there. Talk about half a job, it looks like we haven't cleared up after ourselves. What we're hoping is that the caravan will be able to go round the back of the station here and be settled between the two platforms. The perfect place to be when you're renovating a railway station. Between the platforms here looks perfect. Hopefully we can get it there. It's going to be a really exciting time and a big adventure. So there's absolutely loads to do to make sure everything's ready for the caravan arriving in two and a half weeks. Subscribe to us at the old station renovation to see our journey.